Hello everybody and welcome to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kinnicky and if you guys are new to this channel, go down here and hit subscribe and hit that little bell notification, hit that thumbs up. If we can get this video to 2,000 likes, we're going to be giving away a couple pieces of Addicted merch. So comment below, like this video, and get it out there so that everybody can see it. Today we're doing a little educational piece on how to fish spinners and in particular we're going to go head to head torpedo body spinners versus bell body spinners. So if you guys want to learn more on how to catch more salmon and steelhead on spinners, stay tuned. It's coming at you right now. So the main topic we're covering here today, guys, is styles and designs of spinners. Obviously what I have here is two different ones, and the one I'm gonna start off with first is a torpedo body. This is a unique design that is used all over the world, and the thing about this spinner is the type of water that's, that you're gonna fish with it. That's what well, hey everyone, I'm so sorry for interrupting this video, but don't go anywhere. I have a special, special announcement. June 28th, our summer apparel drop. We're gonna be dropping apparel every single quarter now, limited edition items, sweatshirts, hats, some special tackle items, all sorts of things that you are not going to wanna to miss. This is a limited drop, so once the stuff's sold out, it's gone. We got a link in our description down below, addicted.fishing. Stay tuned, now back to your video. That's what differentiates each style of these spinners is the kind of water that you're gonna look for to fish that style of spinner. I switch through these two different styles of spinner all day long when I'm out on the river. And actually I have three here, but we're gonna talk about the other ones later. So I'm gonna start with my number four little torpedo body. This is a steelhead slammer. My other favorite brand is, is an R&B spinner. Well, this is a four and a half, and they make them all the way up into size five or size six. The size isn't necessarily gonna matter other than the kind of depth that you wanna cover with this. I'm gonna take one of these, I'm gonna put it on my rod, and I'm gonna step back behind us and show you guys where you wanna fish this one first. But these are the couple of the different designs. All colors work well. You wanna just look in your box, you wanna have a good variation of three to four colors through the color range, through the rainbow. And when you get to the river, open your box and see which one is yelling at you. And what I mean by that, see which one's the most vibrant, the, the one that's going best with that water clarity that you have. If it's a very clear water, you wanna go with neutral blues. If it's dirty and it's really silty, you want to go with pinks or yellows or different kind of bronze colors that's going to stand out in that dirty water. So, what you can obviously see here on this little number four that I have, I don't have a hook on it yet. Probably the most important part of fishing a spinner in general, in my mind, is to switch out the treble hook for a sidewash hook. And my favorite sidewash hook that I like to use is the 2 aught Mustad sidewash. So you guys can see the main difference in the, in the design of this spinner or of this sidewash hook itself. And it really comes down to the shape of it. This has a lot of shaft and a lot of different, a lot of room for that fish to roll off and use that hook to actually unhook itself. Where these mustad hooks have a really big intern to them. You can see how they're, they're bent off to one side. And what that does is as that fish grabs that and it rolls it in, it buries that hook as deep as it can and uses every bit of that hook gap to get in that fish's mouth. So main key to it, I like to switch my spinner blades out with a sidewash hook and preferably a two aught mustad sidewash. So I'm gonna put that on there. I've got my Gerber pliers here. I'm gonna crimp that down just like so. Make sure to get it all the way closed. You may wanna make sure there's no gap in between that hook. Because what'll happen is that'll roll off and if you're fighting a big fish, sometimes it'll roll out and pull that hook right off of that spinner. So make sure to get a good pinch with those, with those pliers and we're ready to go. The rod that I like to use for this is very particular. You have to have a sensitive rod and a fast action rod for fishing spinners because you need to have a lot of sensitivity. We want to be hitting the bottom and we want to be down in the strike zone to try to catch these fish. So what I have here today is a 9.2 Okuma X. This is a really nice new rod that comes out by Okuma. You can use any kind of brand you want, but I like this one. This is one of the better drift fishing rods or spinner rods that I've ever used. Um, it has a Helios reel in it and I like to use a 30 pound braid so that it cuts through the current and it can get down underneath those water currents where a 30, 40, or anything above a 30, 40, or 50 is gonna catch a lot of the water current and it's not gonna allow you to get down in the strike zone. So I have that run all the way down to a 15 pound fluorocarbon bumper, which I connect with the blood knot. All right up here about six or seven feet is what I like to start with. And once it gets down a little bit shorter, I'll put a new bumper on. And then I'm going straight to my bell body, or excuse me, my torpedo body number five that I already have on here, old trusty blue. And uh, let's step behind this. We're actually gonna show you guys where you wanna fish a torpedo body spinner. 
So what we have behind us now, you guys, is what I would call pretty much a typical or a perfect steelhead run, no matter where you are. What we have is a, is a good about walking speed current, just faster than walking speed. We have all the way from six inches to about six feet of depth, a good range, and then a long, beautiful tail out. And this is the kind of water I'm gonna look for if I want to steelhead fish in general, or especially with spinners. You want moving current, because you need that current to use with your line to create that swing and get that good presentation, which I'm gonna show you right here. So as you can see, we're walking up, we got good structure, we got a fast current on the far side, we got big boulders, and that's why I'm gonna go ahead and use a torpedo body style spinner. If I'm fishing shallow water, this isn't gonna be a good use because we don't wanna to get to the bottom that fast like you can with the spinner in this situation. It's about six feet deep. So I want that line to fly out there, my spinner to hit the water and it to sink immediately and get down in the strike zone. And then I'm gonna mathematically break down the run systematically and go down all the way through the tail out, covering every little piece of water with it. So what I do is I walk up here, I identify my structure, and a great way to do that is with a good pair of sunglasses. I hate leaving my sunglasses at home because I can't see the bottom of the river. So these Smith Optics, the Guide's Choice, or any of their glass lenses are incredible for doing this. I would just recommend to spend the money and get good glasses. It's gonna make you a better fisherman. So I can see my, my bottom here. What I'm gonna start is with a close middle far presentation. I'm gonna go look at this run. I can see right about 20 feet out, I can't see the bottom. So that's where I'm gonna start my cast. And I'm gonna work my 45s. I'm gonna throw up river at 45 degrees. I'm gonna slowly put my tip down towards the water and reel just enough to get that spinner blade moving. And you can see I'm following that spinner the whole way through. Why I'm doing that is, is so I can have that straight point of contact between me and the spinner and I can actually have full sensitivity to feel when that fish grabs that spinner. So that, that doing that is gonna keep you fishing down to the bottom and across. You don't wanna cast and let it sink. That's how you lose your spinner, even with the sidewash hook. You wanna cast and you wanna fish the spinner down to the bottom. So now that I made that close cast, I'm gonna go one about to halfway across the river. I'm gonna go to my middle cast. I'm gonna let that belly form a little bit. I'm gonna slowly reel and I'm gonna follow that spinner all the way through. And the beauty of that is as you keep your tip low, you're gonna have that spinner sink. If you bring your tip to the surface, it's gonna bring the spinner to the surface. And the, the spinner will go wherever you point your rod tip. So now that I've made that middle cast, I'm gonna go to my far cast. I'm gonna let that sink just a little bit. I'm gonna point my tip at it and I'm gonna engage that spinner with two to three reels. And once I can see it spinning and I can feel that thump, I'm just gonna follow it all the way through with my tip down. I see if I get a bite or I hit bottom, all I'm gonna do is lift up and look how immediately that spinner comes straight to the surface. Put my tip down and it goes back down. And that is how you really wanna key in and control your spinner. So now that I've made that third cast at that far distance, I'm gonna take two steps. I'm gonna go one, two down river. And then I'm gonna start my whole system over again. I'm gonna cast close. I'm gonna swing this inside bank, right where I think these fish could be hiding in close to me. Sit down, following it all the way through. Hit the bottom, so I'm gonna lift up and bring it back in. I'm gonna to go to my middle cast now. I'm gonna fish that down to the bottom with my low rod tip. And what happens when you start leaving your rod tip in one direction or the other, you guys, is you lose sensitivity. You start getting that belly in your line and it takes away all that direct point of contact between you and that spinner. I'm gonna go to my far cast. Oh boy, that's a good drift. That's a good one. Woo wee! Okay, now that I made that third cast, I'm gonna take my two steps. And so what you guys are already starting to see here is that we are slowly going down and basically covering every single rock in this run. I'm not standing at one point that I think is the best in casting and casting. I'm moving my way through and then I'm moving on down river and covering more of that water. So that is why and where you wanna use these torpedo body spinners is really to get down in certain runs that you can't get depth with with your, with your bell body. The thing about the bell body, which I'll show you guys here next, is that it has a lot of volume and it has a lot of surface area to where it catches a lot of those upwellings in that water current and doesn't allow you to sink all the way down to the bottom like you can with the torpedo blade. All right, so now we're gonna go to the bell body spinner. You can all see the obvious difference in between these two designs. And the main difference, like I mentioned just a second ago, is the amount of volume that these spinners have. You see this big bell body, it catches a lot of the water current and a lot of that surface area gets disrupted by the water and gets pushed around. So why I wanna use these and where is in faster water. And you can notice that I've gone to a number five in a lot of these. This is an R&B, this is a number five. 
Blue Fox. Number fours work just as well in the same kind of water currents, but I find some of these R&Bs and these different off brands are a little heavier than these, these uh, Blue Foxes can be. So you can cast them a little easier, you can get them down a little bit deeper water. But the main thing that we're using this for is to fish that fast water. What I have on here is the same kind of setup, the same 9.2 X-Series rod, but this is in a, in a spinning reel. I have a 3,000 Kaimar on here with, again, that 30-pound braid, down to the 15-pound bumper, down to my number five blue fox. And now let's step into the water and show you guys where you want to fish something like this. All right, you guys, now that we have the bell body in our hand, we're going to pick an obvious and a very, very distinct, different kind of run to fish them in. A lot of times I'm never gonna use one of these number fours or number five bell body in anything over about six feet deep. And why that is is because again, we just talked about a couple times, the surface area of the spinner. It doesn't wanna sink. If there's any amount of current that's pushing off the rocks and off the bottom, it's gonna keep it up and off the bottom. And we wanna be down and close to the bottom. So the kind of run we're gonna pick for this is something like you see right here. Something that's more of a rapid, something that's more of a riffle, or something that's gonna be faster and shallower. Anywhere it's under about six feet again. So what I'm looking at here, we have a nice long straight run, it breaks down, has a nice little elevation drop, and it slowly dumps off into a ripple into this deep hole. So what I'm gonna do with this spinner here is I'm gonna start at the very highest point I can go, we'll walk up there, and I'll mathematically again and, and precisely break down the run going close, middle, far, close, middle, far, and I'll show you how we're gonna keep this up off the bottom. So all salmon and steelhead like to sit in fast water at some point throughout their migration. And a lot of it is because the water is one, it's colder and it's more oxygenated. There's more bubbles coming off of the rocks and the rapids creating that oxygen through their gills because they're on the move, they're traveling a long way. So here I go, I got a nice shallow run. I'm gonna start close with my close cast, never really casting too far up river with this. And see the beauty of this blade and the number five and, and being that it's the bell body is I can literally just almost let this thing drift fish across the bottom. And because I have that two op mustad sidewash on there, I'm not snagging up every single time it hits the bottom because that, that spinner blade is spinning through, keeping that, that hook up off the bottom and allowing it to drip. So that was my first closed cast. I can see I have that little break in the definition of the river on the far side. I'm gonna go right to that for my middle cast. Oh, I just got hit by a small little baby fish. But you can see I'm reeling very slow, again, keeping my tip a little bit higher because I don't want this spinner getting too deep and hitting bottom and snagging. So I'm gonna keep my tip up just a little bit higher than I would in a deep run, like with the torpedo blade, and I'm gonna allow it to just drift more laterally than vertically. I don't wanna cast and retrieve, cast and retrieve. I wanna cast, allow the current to grab that blade and, and keep it up off the bottom and slowly work it through laterally down the river rather than vertically back towards us. So now that I did that long cast, I'm gonna take two steps. I'm gonna go to that far side here, keeping my tip high, but following my spinner all the way through, making sure I can feel that thump from that blade and just reeling enough to keep it up off the bottom. Now that that current grabs it right about three quarters of the drift, I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I'm not even reeling. And the current is actually carrying that blade. And as long as my tip's still moving, as long as I'm following it and I can feel it's touching bottom, but my blade is still spinning, I'm fishing well. So now that I worked that one, and you can see here how fishing this type of spinner is keeping me from getting snagged. That's the biggest key in changing that body style is that the water current pushing off the bottom off, off these rocks will keep this spinner up off the bottom, contrary to the way that the torpedo body would, where it would be just getting sucked down and into the rocks because it falls so much faster through the water. So I'm gonna take a couple more steps down here, go to my middle cast, get that blade. And again, you don't wanna let these sink. You want to engage that blade and you want to fish them down to the bottom. And by doing that with your rod tip, keeping it low, that'll again control where that spinner is going to go. So I'm starting to hit bottom right there. I'm going to lift it up and look how that thing comes straight to the surface for me and actually even pops up out of the water and I can reel it back in. And that's what we're going to keep doing. We're just going to mathematically break it down, close, middle, far, close, middle, far, two steps after every close, middle, far, and work this spinner all the way down through this fast water. So I hope what you guys have learned here today and something that'll help you along the way is knowing what kind of water to pick to choose one of these spinners. And then again, giving yourself the option of having both spinners. You can find a lot of these spinners online. You can find, of course, blue foxes and the different bell bodies pretty much anywhere you can buy fishing tackle. But try both styles in different water currents and I guarantee you it will help you catch more fish. Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. We really appreciate your support. And again, get this video to 2,000 likes. Go down here, hit that thumbs up. Leave a little comment below with what you think and what your favorite kind of spinner is. Give us a little feedback. Ask any questions you need to. Again, thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. You stay fishy, and we'll see you out there.